right, and we've patiently had uh, our guest, Mr. Frank Tiete, from our Puja Studios to talk to us, uh, especially what he makes of um, the governor of Oyo State who has made his assets public and liabilities, that is. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, quickly, the, the Constitution, just looking at it, Section 185 talks about a person elected to, to the office of governor of the state shall not begin to perform those functions until he has declared his assets and liabilities. And it also talks about the oath of allegiance and oath of office as prescribed in the seventh schedule to uh, the Constitution. I mean, there is nothing public about this, uh, saying that um, a governor must publicly declare his assets and liabilities, is there? Well, uh, thank you very much. You, you see, it's just a matter of uh, trying to raise the integrity bar. Uh, you know, former president uh, Yadua has done the same. And then uh, it's just a way of uh, trying to say that uh, I am upright as a governor and I wouldn't uh, steal uh, your, your funds. But, but that's not uh, what it, it seems to be, because... Uh, where a governor does not have any legal uh, obligation, or, no public officer doesn't have any legal ob obligation to make the assets declaration, make his asset declaration public. But when, when he does decide to make it public, there will be some implications because there is usually a silent function of the, uh, the, the Code of Conduct Bureau that goes on throughout the four years of the, 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 the tenure of the governor, and that is the investigation of the declaration of the assets by the governor himself. So if the governor decides to raise the integrity bar by making a public declaration of his assets, then the Code of Conduct Bureau also owes the public a duty to make, it, to make its findings because it must immediately begin to investigate the details of the asset declaration form. Now, there are, there, 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 the, 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 a breach of the Code of Conduct Bureau with regards specifically to assets declaration is when there is either under declaration and over declaration. So in this case of um, Mackinde, it has made news not necessarily because he made it public, but because the amount he quoted, 48 billion naira, seems to be very unusual to, to, to be owned by an individual uh, at, at this moment. So there could be issues with regards to over declaration for the purpose of what some of us in the civil society sector consider as anticipatory acquisition of uh, uh, resources in order to justify what has uh, been declared. Well, and, and so the, the Code of Conduct Bureau has an onerous task at this moment, not necessarily to just receive the declaration form, but to immediately investigate whether the contents of those, uh, the, uh, the, 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 those assets that are, as contained in the declaration form are, are true. And well, but I'm sure, I'm sure as true, well that the, the governor knew what he was getting free. into when, when he decided to uh, make this declaration. Many people are applauding it. And, and you're saying he has entered a pot of soup. Uh, permit me to use that. Um, because I know that Sarap had indeed asked the Code of Conduct Bureau to, uh, before, sort of um, allow public officers, public officers publicly declare this asset so people can know um, how much they own. But they have always said that it's a private information, it's a private affair, it's a private matter. But many people feel that, as public officials, the people need to know. Now, in this case, the governor has completely removed any restrictions with regards to matters that relate to his assets declaration. So the Code of Conduct Bureau cannot, cannot, and in any way justify a, a, a refusal in, with regards to any inquiries uh, regarding the, the, the assets declaration of the governor. But look, it is not about what the governor has declared now. It's about whether what the governor has declared is true. And it, 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 presumably, most Nigerians are thinking that, look, this is not realistic. What has Mackinde been up to that in, he is up to, he is, I mean, he's worth up to 48 billion naira. So there is that immediate task for the, the Code of Conduct Bureau to make such clarifications. Now, one thing that is also important is this. Now, let us not go on the path of self-deception, because if there is real, uh, I mean, a good intention to actually raise the integrity bar, it is not, even though, even though the law requires that it is upon, it is upon election, it is upon appointment as a public officer that you make a declaration, but it would have been ideal for someone who is trying to tout integrity 
to actually make a declaration at the point of intention to contest as governor. That is, at the point even before the primaries. Then, it is not when you take, I mean, what, what Makinde has done is not new. Even the, uh, the other governors before him have done so. I knew, for example, the declaration of uh, Governor James Ibori far back in 1999 as time 10 billion naira before he was, uh, 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 I mean, he, before he, 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 he took right. up the mantle of leadership as governor of Delta State. Thank you, Tate. Former President, yeah, we, uh, we would like to thank you. Uh, that's the much we can take at, at this time. We'll see how all of these plays out in the coming days, but we appreciate your time on the program.